Hello everyone, welcome to SHOT Show 2017. I'm here with Interbark Outdoors and he wants to look at our new stuff. Yeah, I saw that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, you back. Yeah. <laughs> we're not sure on that one yet. Okay, when will you the first sure? thing that we're going to start with is actually the first model that Top's ever made. The Steel Eagle. The very first one we made was the 107D, which is actually the Tanto Point. And then the 107C with what we call a Hunter's Point came next. This knife has been selling strong since 1998. And this year what we wanted to do is release this with a little bit more class. So we've got, we've got a, a, a new tumble finished on this. There's, a, there's, a, there's some darkening of the steel that's happened with some, some patina that we do. And then we've tumble finished it, but there's a clear layer of Cerakote to prevent from rust. But the thing that I like most about these is the handles. We've taken black canvas micarta and tan canvas micarta and sandwiched a red liner in there in the middle. And it just, it just looks real sharp. One of the things that we wanted to, to accomplish with this is we wanted a thicker handle. We wanted it to feel like an ax handle, you know, full, thick, heavy, um, but it's still contoured quite a bit. It's nice and round. It's very comfortable. So the Steel Eagles, we're calling this the Delta class. They'll be out sometime this year. I have no release dates. I don't really have prices yet. Um, we're kind of, we'll figure that all out after the show. But people don't really care about that. They want to see the good stuff. So next, this is one that I'm really excited about. I think this is going to be one of the best bushcraft knives out this year. It's called the Tanimboka Puko. And it was designed by a man named Gorin. And I'm not even going to try his last name because I'll murder it. He's, uh, he's originally from Europe. He speaks five languages. Uh, but now he's currently living in Colombia. He's been there for about the last 20 years. Uh, he owns a nature reserve. He does a lot of, uh, he, he hosts a lot of biologists, a lot of scientists from all over the world that come to study the life and life down in the Amazon, whether it's plants, bugs, animals, you name it. Um, but he's also really big into knives. He's been using knives since he was a kid. He's been making knives for a lot of years and he's a big fan of Puko designs. So we've been working with him on this. He, he drew this design up and we wanted to make it a Topps model, but keep it as true to the traditional Puko as possible. So we've got the modified Scandi grind, which is, is our flair, and we've got the micarta handles, which are our flair, but we've rounded them to try to make them as close as possible to that traditional circular wooden handle. So they're, they're thick with a lot of contour. So it's made it very comfortable. There's no, uh, there's no finger guard, which is traditional for the Puko. Um, you know, just a real simple design, but this thing is gonna be, this is gonna be very popular. Next up, I'm sure that you've seen the Frog Market Special, if you know who we are. This is the closest thing we have to a kitchen knife. This year, we're releasing the, the chef's knife version, if you will, the Frog Market Special XL. So this one, we've gone a little bit thicker on the steel. This one is 3 seconds thick. The other one is 1 16th. So it's a little bit thicker, but it's also longer, so that, that helps. Um, but yeah, basically a nice camp knife, a nice kitchen knife. Uh, I, I know that I'm going to have one of these in my kitchen, and I'm sure that I'll have a, sec a separate one that I take camping with me. Um, really fun design uh, by Stephen Dick. The Backpacker's Bowie is actually one that we wanted to make, uh, I mean specifically for backpackers obviously, people who traditionally carry lightweight items. So we've kept it thin, one eighth of an inch. We've got a, a hook on here. This is for a pot to be able to pull it out of a fire. Um, other than that, just kind of a simple Bowie design. This one's not finished yet. We've got a couple of changes to make um, to make sure that it's comfortable and, and that it's you know that it's that it's going to work properly. But uh, what we were shooting for here was a nice lightweight knife that you could take with you on long trips. Comfortable handle. Um, yeah. This one's gonna be uh, probably later in the year before we get this one released. This one I'm really excited about because we did something we, we've never really done before. Um, traditionally, we work with outside designers. 
or Leo designs most of the knives that we make. But what we did is, is around the end of the year, we said, you know what, let's, let's do kind of a contest inside of Topps Knives. So we talked to all of the employees and said, we want somebody, we want a, a tomahawk or a hatchet design. Whoever makes the best one, we're gonna make it. So that's how this one actually came about. The funniest part of this story is that, that Leo's father works at Topps Knives as well. Um, and this is his design. <laughs> So it's kind of like a like son, like father type deal. And um, he had actually drawn this up before we decided to do the contest and was going to have, was going to have Leo just make one for him personally. And so when we did the contest, he's like, oh, perfect. He gave us the paper. We did kind of a blind, uh, we did kind of a blind judging on it. And all of us picked this one. So, uh, you know, it was, it was actually just, just kind of a really fun story. Um, but it's a, we got this hatchet, big head, nice and heavy up at the top so that you'll get good chopping out of it, even though it's in a fairly small package. So that's Grandpa's axe. Next up, next up, this one is probably the other one that I'm almost most excited about. We've got what we are calling the Hammerhawk and the Hammerhawk Backup. The idea here is that we're gonna make, the, the sheath for this will be leather, and it's gonna be a piggyback style. So this, this knife will go with the Tomahawk. But what I like best here is this, this milling pattern that we've done up in the top. That'll do it. That was done, uh, that was done by the CNC machine. We actually milled that um, rather than stamping it. We took, we took our customers' feedback. Last year, we, we released the Viax, and a lot of people said, I would love this if it didn't have the spike on the back. If you gave it a hammer or did something else on the back end, I would be all over it. So we listened, and that's why we've got more of a hammer style on the back of this. It's 3 eighths of an inch thick, so there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of steel there to be able to, to hammer whatever it is got to hammer, skulls, nails, etc. Um, Still one piece, one solid piece, so it's going to be fairly heavy, but really cool. The only change on this is that uh, we're going to fix that right there. It's going to be a, a continuous curve like you would expect from a, from a hatchet type blade. So, that one's going to be great. Keeping in line with the larger items here, we've got El Chete. This is another one that was designed by Leo. Um, yeah, I want to say it was probably like July or August of this year. He just came up to me one day and he said, you know what, I'm going to make a big chopper. And then I was like, okay, that's cool. And he, he walked away. He came back into my office about 20 minutes later and said, here it is, and showed me the drawing. And then about a day or two later, we had one made. We went out and used it. And the very first chop with this went about three inches deep into a branch, clean. And there was no, there was no breaking. It was just cut. And so, from the very first swing, we were like, "Yeah, this is ready. This, this is going to happen." So, we've got kind of the same thing going on there with our, our Black River watch that we've added a little bit of flair to. It's got a kind of a tumble finish on it, and we've also done that that same handle, black canvas scent and green canvas sandwiched between a red liner. Very, very cool. This one's going to be a lot of fun. The next one that we have that's on the same lines of uh, machetes and choppers is called the Yacare, uh, which basically means Cayman. Um, this one is actually one that I designed based on my experience in, uh, in Costa Rica and in Colombia when I went down to the Bushcraft Global trip. Um, I just, I don't know if I always really liked machetes, but I also like, I like thicker knives than that. You know, the machetes, I like the flex. They're, they're great for what they're designed for. But in, in Idaho, you need kind of a thicker knife. And so we went with 3 16 of an inch on the steel. And from the prototype, which some people probably saw, saw at the blade show, we've brought that grind up quite a bit. Um, what that did is it helped balance out the weight and it helped make this just way better as a, as a chopping knife and as a short machete. 
We also made a little bit of change in the handle to make that grip a little bit, a uh, little bit more secure there, and to make it a little bit more comfortable if you're holding it further back. So this one's pretty much ready to go. We'll have it out sometime this year. It's going to be a lot of fun, and not just because I designed it. So, <laughs> um, all right. Next up, we've got one called the Missile Strike. So, and we got our start as a tactical knife making company. We, we started with strictly knives for military and law enforcement personnel. And in the last few years, we've gotten away from that uh, and, and started doing a lot more outdoors knives, camp, survival, bushcraft. Um, but we don't want to, we don't want to lose our roots, you know, we're still, we still make hardcore tactical knives and this one is one of those. It was designed by a guy named Kelly McCauley. Um, he's actually been sending knives and talking to Leo and Mike for years, a couple of years, two or three years now actually. And uh, we've always liked them but it just hasn't been the right time or we've had something too similar or whatever. Uh, but he sent us this one and we were like, yes, this is going to happen. So we did a nice, uh, nice thick tang on this, quarter of an inch. It's got a really pronounced finger guard and, uh, and a spear point, which can be sharpened on the top edge. You can add serrations to top or to the bottom. Um, and actually, we got, we got a sample here. This will show some of the options. We can do a camo on this. We can do serrations. We can do Rocky Mountain tread. Um, and we can do that top edge sharpen. So there are a lot of options with this knife, uh, but it's just going to be a hardcore stabbing knife. I mean, this thing is going to be brutal. So very, very cool. Next up, it's been a while since we did a push dagger. We have one out called the, the Grim Ripper, and we decided that it was time for a new one. So we've got this one. We made it to try to be try to be comfortable in either grip, either between the, the middle and the ring finger, or between the ring and, in, and uh, middle and index finger. So, just I mean, it's just it's a beast. It's three eighths of an inch thick, so a really thick stock on that. Ground down to a pretty thin tip. Um, nice comfortable handle on it. And we're kind of trying to get feedback on whether that twist in the handle is uh, is a yes or a no. You know, let us know what you think, people. Twist or no twist. Yeah. The funny thing about that one is we made those. We started making those the, the prototypes about two weeks ago. <laughs> so that happened very fast. Hey, my name is Jacob. I do the Preppers Bunker okay. Outdoors on YouTube. And, okay. uh, I've Next up, we got a couple of really cool, uh, just fun items. Uh, we're uh, we're going to make a slingshot. Okay. We'll call it the top uh, sling. <clears throat> just standard, you know, slingshot. But uh, who doesn't like a slingshot? I mean, it's just, it's just fun. It's been a while since we did something just for fun. So we made this. Um, and actually, while, uh, while we were deciding to make this, Leo also said, hey, you know what? Why don't we do this? So we decided to make a slingshot that is also a folding knife. The initial idea was actually to make it a fixed blade, but uh, we kind of we got away from that. We decided, no, folding knife is the way to go. So we've got what we're calling the Topps Multi-Tool. This one, I just, I just, I'm in love with just because it's fun. We're going to we're going to set this up so that the, the the slingshot will be removable, and you can replace it with other items. We're thinking about doing several things: a shovel, um, grilling tools like a like a spatula. Uh, we we don't even know what all we're going to do yet, but we've got some ideas. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the the consensus that we're getting from people so far is, if I had this when I was younger. And then just whatever, you know, like uh, I would I would have hurt myself a lot more. Or I would have had this much fun or everybody's like, yes, if I was a kid, I would love this thing. So we're kind of appealing to the big kid and all the guys out there with this model. OK, also, if you haven't seen it, make sure that you pick one of these up. This is the ice dagger. 
Uh, this was designed by none other than Andy Tran. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You got a really strong reinforced tip up here with the, the dual grind, a little more shallow here to keep the tip strong. And then the blade is nice and thin here, so it's gonna be just super sharp. Um, you got your finger ring, so you're, you're good in reverse grip with a couple of strike faces. It's also comfortable in the forward grip. And you've got a sheath that's set up. Uh, we're, we're, gonna sell, we're gonna send these out either with a neck chain or for an extra $10 with these beta straps. These will help so that if you wanna put it on your belt, um, inside or outside the belt, horizontal, vertical, you can do a lot of different things with this, uh, with this kind of setup with these, these beta loops. So really cool design. Again, I'm sure you've seen it if you're looking at Andy Tran's YouTube channel, but that's new. Okay, last but not least, we have two more that people have been asking about. First, I'm not gonna flip it open because I don't wanna cut anybody. We've got the tactical fly. This is our version of a butterfly knife. You'll notice right away that most butterfly knives are thin. We made this to be something that you can use, that it's not just, you know, go go and, and flip it around and play with it and cut boxes, but this you could actually take hunting with you, you can take out in the woods. Um, and that was kind of the, the idea that, that Leo had. He was like, I like butterfly knives and I like hunting, so I'm gonna take a knife that can do both. So that's what we got with that. Basically, we've, we've changed this from aluminum handles into steel handles. The weight was kind of off with the aluminum, and we just think that the steel is going to hold up a little bit better. So that's what we were going for with this. Really happy about it, um, and I believe that we'll have this ready for release sometime this year. Reversible pocket clip. We've got, uh, we've got the, the lock on there that'll help keep it closed or open. Um, really excited about this. That's going to be tons of fun. And finally, we have the Bob folder. I know that we've been showing this since two years ago was the first time we debuted at SHOT Show. And we've been getting so many questions about it. Every time I put something up on Facebook, somebody puts up a question. What about that Bob folder? When's that Bob folder coming? And, and we just want people to know that we, the, the prototyping process is kind of a long process. It's not, it's not quick. When you do a prototype of something, you've got to make a change in your drawing, you got to go cut one out, you got to heat treat it, you got to assemble it, and then you got to test it. And if you have to change anything, you do that process over again. So we're talking about weeks or months between each run of prototypes. And so it's not like we're making massive changes every time, we're making very small changes, but that adds up over time. And so that's why it's taken so long. The cool thing about this is we're gonna do what we call the pre-production run. So basically we've done prototype after prototype, and now we say, we, with the last prototype we said it's ready to go. Let's do a run of 50 and see what happens. So we did a run of 50 and it's ready. So these 50 are gonna be the, the, the pre-production. We're only going to do 50 that are engraved like this as a pre-production version. And they're all gonna be individually serialized, one of, two of, and so on. When we start with the actual production run, we're gonna start at 51, not 001. So there will only be 50 of these. We expect them to be somewhat collectible. Um, and hopefully, very, very soon after SHOT Show, we'll have this ready to sell. So get ready, people. So we're on Instagram, Tops Knives. We're on uh, Facebook, Tops Knives Official. We have a YouTube channel. Um, we got our website, of course, topsknives.com. Um, if you like Tops Knives, definitely go to, to, to Facebook, to the Tops Knives users group. Uh, it's a private group, so you have to ask to get in, but uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of discussion there about Tops Knives and people that use them. So thank you, Andy, for coming. Appreciate it.